We've got the football in focus from the teed up and doors on Battleground Avenue. Back in again at Davis Troxler's Golf Store again. Got things going on in the football scene with Brian Roche from the News and Record. And last Friday night, Northwest handle page, a uh, bigger margin of victory, some expected. Otherwise, uh, for some reason, a lot of blowouts last week. What about that game with uh, Page and Northwest Kilford? What about that game last week? You kept up with it a little bit. I know you were at the Smith and the other game. You kept up with yeah. the Page and Northwest a little bit there. Uh, you know, it's kind of. Yeah, it did surprise me. I'm, I'm going to be honest, it did surprise me a little bit. Um, I, I remember being on the show with you last week, and I honest to goodness thought it could have been a toss up game. Uh, Last year it was a very close game, um, and yeah, it was not what I expected. But I think Northwest came out with some vengeance after losing to Grimsley. Yeah, and uh, I'm not sure if Page maybe got too high on themselves, or if it just wasn't their day. I don't know for sure. But five interceptions in that game. Go. You know, that's a lot of interceptions. That's, that's a good amount of tossing. They were talking about the fact that the Northwest, Northwest defensive good, backs, yeah. that Herb McNeil kid, he had two picks, had a chance for a third. So he was really active back there as well as Austin Jackson and others in that defensive secondary. And the linebacker is active too. Yeah. And Herb's already got five on the year. The team mm -hmm. already has 12. That's a lot. Uh, and so they've, they've had a knack for forcing those INTs this season. Yeah. So one thing, he's got uh, five on the year. That's really good. Very good for her. And five on the year already? It's five already for oh, her. Close to six. That's not bad at all. I, I played back in the day, and one of the kids on my team, he came out the last year and hadn't played his entire high school career. Came out his last year. Coach finally coaxed him into a good athlete. His name was Tim Sapp. Tim, if you're still out there, hey, got a pop. <laughs> anyway, they called him the snake for some reason. Like Coach Henderson always found ways giving these guys these nicknames. Anyway, Tim, I think he wore number seven of all. Things. Anyway, he's back in defense in second. He got seven interceptions that season. Seven picks, that's a lot of picks back in those days anyway. But I was mm -hmm. hearing about Herb McNeil. He's also another former Western Gopher guy. Now with Northwest, anyway, he's got seven on the season. Mm -hmm. Not bad at all. Not bad at all for that Northwest secondary. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens this week. They've got Northern. and uh, Big one, big one. That's Ooh. the one I have circled as my game of the week mm -hmm. this week. Uh, good old rivalry uh, mm -hmm. neighborhood nature, I'm sure we'll touch on that one for sure, I know. That's going to be a huge. That's a kid named for Northwest, Josh Perquette. He transferred in for Northeast a couple of years. Anyway, Josh, I got to give him a Player of the Week award because he helped me carry my bags in last week. <laughs> I was carrying my equipment in. We had to gates, they got to keep the gates locked to the fence and get there around 630. So we walked all the way around the stadium carrying those bags. And Josh, he was a trooper. Uh, some of the football players said, well, just skip walking around. We, they jumped the fence. They, uh, I said, Josh, you weigh about 300 some pounds. You jumped that fence in those <laughs> ankles. We could be watching you play Friday night football in the Moses Cone Hospital, so you better keep up with us. So Northwest, Northern Mike will be a huge one. We know that for a fact. Uh, Grimm's is the number one team in the area. Dudley is number two. Not, not Dudley number three, excuse me. Because we got another team at number two, East Forsyth. So East Forsyth and Grimm's, they meet in the playoffs. What do you think could happen there? If uh, Grimsley and Dudley, hypothetically? No, no, Gr Grimsley and East Forsyth. Think about oh, that in the playoffs. Oh, in a, re in a real, okay. Yeah, because yeah, they uh, played a know, scrimmage, a, yeah, and they could yeah. end up in the playoffs in the, in the West, you know? They could. Um, I think it would be an interesting matchup. I really do. I saw them scrimmage, uh, the scrimmage that you were alluding to, and uh, I felt like the teams were pretty even. Uh, you know, different skill sets to an extent. Um, I, I think I probably – I might give East Forsyth's offense a little bit of touch, mm -hmm. but I might give Grimsley's defense oh, yeah. a little touch. And some people say so. that's the big thing about Grims this year because you, you've talked about it here on this show, Football and Focus, TF and Arizona Battleground. It's about the fact that in some ways Grimsley is better than last year. It's because of their defense. Their offense is doing good, maybe not quite prolific as it was last season. Those two receivers, Troy Anderson and, and uh, Alex Taylor, but this year with that defense is playing extremely good. I think so. I think you – you uh, talk about Bryce Davis basically being out for the vast majority of last year. He's been a big part of that. And then you also factor in that that linebacking group is a year older. And I think last year, I think some people would have said that was probably the weakness of last year's defense. I think they've improved. And then the secondary was kind of a question mark with everybody leaving. But I got to tell you, the guys they've had fill in might be even better. Um, and they're probably a bigger group. They're probably a more sizable group, more length, um, a little bit of a different style, maybe a little more press, maybe a little more up and under you, you know, physically. Uh, but I think in a way they're, they could actually be better even though they're new.
You know, the thing about it is, uh, start thinking about Grimsley from last year. Like, who did they lose off last year's defensive team? I mean, you start you don't, can't, can't get too many names. That means this year's pretty darn good, too, because it might be better last year. And I'll say, maybe Fred Sellers is one guy. Maybe Fred, the defensive secondary, some other guys. But so there's other names I can't remember those, but, because that shows this year's bunch has taken over and they, they made a name for themselves. Yeah, I mean, some of the guys that you thought last year, you know, in that secondary, you had Christian Barrett, who. Mm -hmm was a transfer kid, but then he moved back to Florida. Hmm. Fred Sellers, as you talked about, uh, went to UNC Pembroke. Uh, Dion McLaughlin left, um, and he had a bunch of interceptions. Um, you know, and then uh, Davis, uh, the other safety. So, uh, yes, I mean, that's four big guys there that you, uh, you think about, all gone, but I really like this new group. And you throw in the fact that that defense. Oh, and they got another guy there too, back in that defensive second. That kid, we don't forget, Mr. Debo, Ryan Debo. Come Ryan over. Debo, yeah. Add him. That's not bad. How quickly you forget. It's not a bad addition, yeah. That uh, Northwest Guilford transfer that yes. came in. So, yeah, how quickly we forget there. What about this? So uh, you alluded to it just a few minutes ago. You were ready to jump on it, and you sound like you're hungry for it. <laughs> what about the open week? that our teams had this season, the week of November 8th. Could we see Grimsley versus Dudley that week in an exhibition game between the top two teams, Guilford County? We talked about that on the phone last week. It was a very interesting topic of discussion. If Grimsley and Dudley get together on the, on the uh, open week that week, play an exhibition game, what would that be like? We said we can play it at Page as a neutral site. Just some observations here, thoughts about that. Be a crazy game. All those athletes, you know? Hmm. Daryl Brown, Stephen Davis, Ooh. if you're listening, and the NCHSA is allowing you to have this free game. Can we please have it? Yeah, let's get it. <laughs> Can we please have it? Uh, for the sake of Guilford County, yeah. for the sake of, uh, you know, the people have been clamoring for this. Bragging rights. The old city school matchup yeah. that we crave. Yeah. We've got the perfect spot for it that week, that open week. Can we have a, a like, neutral site? It's like Jenny McCarthy's uh, brother, the Big Ed McCarthy, used to referee the UFC match. The Big Ed would say, let's get it on. Let's get it on. <laughs> so he used to say, this big Gr statement back Grimsley, in the day. Grimsley, Dudley, just find a place. I don't care where you have it. Just fi as find a neutral site, split the gate receipts, yeah. and let's get it on. I tell you what we could do. <laughs> I've got the perfect idea. Well, no, I've never got the perfect idea. I've got an idea. Another, another idea. All these crazy ideas. Let's donate the money to the Western North Carolina uh, hurricane recovery. Hey. What about that? That, that ain't a bad Every idea. Every penny of it. I'm all, I'm all for it. We'll charge parking, buck a, buck a car, and get all the money we can, take it in, hey. and send it to the Western North Carolina Hurricane uh, Helene Relief Fund. We can do that. Dudley hey. versus Grimsley. And, and if people don't believe me, trust me, this game would bring fans. From everywhere. Trust me, people would come to this yeah, game. Yeah, because there's no other games that week, for the most part, so in this area. Yeah. I mean, if no one else has an add-in game, yeah. uh, let's have a Guilford County Championship, championship. of sorts. Yeah. Uh, it's a great, it's a great script. We're gonna call it, we're gonna call it the exhibition slash scrimmage <laughs> because we're gonna get it done. And we, can, and the thing about it is, it just could do so well. And my fun part is, you get on the field that night, you go, you look around, and go, who you got? I don't know who you got. You got so many guys, you got to cover, right? Who you got? Oh, you better get him. I'm gonna try to get. Him. Okay, uh, this be an interesting ball game, Grimsley versus Dudley. A lot Dudley. of firepower would be Ooh, that game. Man. A lot of firepower. A lot of balls in the air. A lot of balls in the ground. Boy, I tell you what, man, those guys get a chance to but see each were. other. <laughs> Uh, you can see Mitchell Summers his senior year playing against the team his brother played four years ago and all this different. Uh, and you could see uh, Jaquez Crawford throwing against his old teammates when he was at Grimsley back in the day. That's true. Man, it'd be wild stuff. There'd be some storylines, no get doubt. Get some good sponsors for that game too. Yeah, we could get a get a get. Uh, who was it? First Horizon just took over the rights to the Coliseum. We'll let them have that game too. If they want <laughs> put as much money to put to the Coliseum. First Horizons championship, Guilford County championship game exhibition. Dudley versus Grimsley on Friday, November the eighth at site to be determined. <laughs> what we used to talk about, we, we were trying to get games years ago, we were gonna put it to the field across from Page High School. There's a big open field over there. They say, they say you can't play it on, on the campus. Well, play it across the street. <laughs> <laughs> Good old fashioned pickup ball. <laughs> exactly. Sandlot ball there. Mm. So we talked about the game there. What about Grimsley and Dudley? Both very tough, but is there a team to watch right now other than those two? There's another team to be watching right now. I, I got okay. one. I'm gonna, can I, oh, I'll raise my hand. And you tell me who you think it is. I'm gonna say, I got it in my mind. See if you can guess this team I'm thinking of. I've got, I've got one team that you and I both said before the season started would be better this year than last year. Right now they're undefeated. I'm talking about Northern That's Guilford. It. That's it. Northern Guilford. Mm. The two of us called it before anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. And so far they're undefeated. 
and play a one-loss Northwest Guilford team this week. They're as close as you can get to Notre Dame. Notre Dame's got the ND, they've got the NG, they're right there at it. And <laughs> yeah, they got the, the game this week, will tell, tell a lot of the story. We're going to find out some stuff about this tomorrow night. Uh, number seven, Jackson Kemp. Number 30, Amari Akers. Number 24, Dwight Hall. Number two, Reggie King. Number eight, Grayson Council. Uh, the tight end, number 80, big big man, Big Mac. Big Mac, the tight end. Get that big old offensive line. Oh, yeah. It's big Sam Bagley up front. And, uh, Swinney. Swinney. Oh, yeah, I mentioned Swinney. last week. And then you got uh, Northwest. We've got number four, uh, Anders Mitchell. I always want to call him Mitchell Anders. I like that Anders. <laughs> like, a, like a Holland uh, <laughs> Danish name. Anyway, oh, uh, you got... Anders Mitchell, quarterback, number four. You got number 23, uh, McKinley Vance. Number 32, flip the number around. Uh, Cox, Nathan Cox. You got number two, Rakim. It's not Rakim, but Rakim Hammock. <laughs> and then you got number 14, the man on the rise. The man on the surge, people coming in right now. The man on the horizon, rising above. Getting it done last week, man getting it done. Quincy Bell Jr., Coach Bell's son. Quincy Bell, number 14 for Northwest. Then you got your man, too, big number 85, Colin Shokes, right? Hey, I love this football playing player. Playing H-backer, playing tight end. That's I, I got to tell you, this kid's a good old-fashioned lunch pail kid. Yes, sir. They'll show up to work. They got him playing D-tackle this year. Uh, I got to tell you, this matchup on the line of scrimmage, I'm excited to see what happens on Friday between Shokes at defensive tackle, good old Bagley at center. We'll see if they even put Sweeney at that right guard spot. He's moved around the line a little bit. They have him at that right guard spot. If they have Shokes in mind, they could be – Matching, you know, those guys guard and center up against him. I really want to see that matchup. And then also don't forget Robert Lange on the defensive oh, yeah. end side off the edge. Uh, again, uh, Braden Ellis, the uh, offensive tackle for Northwest, will have a nice assignment as well uh, for the Vikings. So uh, between some of the linebackers that we see coming off the edge from Northern. So... Uh, you know, whether it be Chance Cruz or... Ah, the Chance Cruz, man. Got to get a bit, remember him right quick. All so the boy, side. there's a lot of And intriguing. Noah Smith. Noah, yeah. I think about the arc and Noah, Noah Smith coming in. There's a whole bunch of intriguing matchups in there. Tomorrow night's game, Northwest Guilford Northern. Be there. Kick off 730. And who do you take in that game? The edge goes to who? I'll tell you what, I've had Northern ranked higher all this season. I feel like I kind of have to ride with them. Yeah. Even though i got to tell you, I think this could be a close one. Uh, the other thing too, always, I feel like I have to ride people with them, always kind of told me to go this route. So the team hadn't lost a game, go with them until they lose. Stick with them until they lose the game. Hadn't lost yet, so you stick with them until they lose, and they're six and zero right now. Uh, I mean, it's Northern tough. If, if Northwest did pull it out, I mean, it wouldn't be a shock. Yeah, coach. Dad, I mean. Coach Rusev just had a good mantra lately. Mantra, mantra, whatever. He's saying we want to go nine and one. We lost that one game. Our goal is to go nine and one. Now, if they go nine and one, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> they could do it. Very much so. How about uh, Paige? In the fast forward mood right now, Western Government page this week. Timothy Baker for Western Government hurting the Grimsley game. So, hoping that Timothy Baker can play. I called Coach uh, Timmons about it one day this week. I call him and bug him every day about Baker's availability. So, it's going to be a game time decision. So, if Baker's available, it's going to help Western. If Baker's not available, it's going to be tough on Western Government against Page. It could be tough. Western's averaging, I believe, six yards per carry uh, on the season. Uh, and Western, a feel good story. They're trying to reach five wins. Uh, for just the second time since, let me pull this up here. I've got it here. Give me just a second here. So they are looking to have five wins for the first time since 2019 mm, wow. and just the second time since 2009. That really says something, second time and, in the past. And they went for it last week. Uh, it would have been a Cinderella story if they pulled it oh, off yeah. Grimsley. Yeah. But against Paige, I think it's a little more realistic. And we'll see what happens. Whatever uh, comes down to Timothy Baker, we'll I think. We'll see if touchdown maker. But they, they've also got some other Ooh, yeah. playmakers they got Elvis, on their squad. Elvis and, back there, yeah. Um, or Elijah. I'll call him Elvis. Elijah Hayes. Elvis Hayes, Elijah Hayes, and then Caleb Moore, Moore. quarterback. You yeah, gotta, those guys can run. But see, I don't think they I think was last week with Timothy Baker combined, they only had like 67 yards of total offense Western last week. Not many yards. I'll tell you what, that Grimsley Ooh. run defense, though, has been very stiff. Mm. They've done that to a bunch of teams. They shut down the Reagan run game. They, uh, the only team that's even come close to getting a nice little gain was Rollsville, mm. who's running back, uh, you know, has got a lot of offers. I mean, offers from Penn State and likes of them. So 
Uh, overall, they've just stopped the run. Grimsley has. So I'll, I'll take that game as an outlier, not a pattern. And you think about it, too. Uh, Grimsley sometimes, teams will start out pretty strong against Grimsley. Start fairly strong, maybe a little strong. But then as the game goes on, Grimsley adjusts, and they just shut those babies down. Shut the door on them. How about this Smith at Southern Guilford game this week? This might be the pick em game this week. Pick or take. Southern Guilford coming off a win. Smith coming off a tough loss to Dudley. Kind of look, they almost look like an even matchup here. Both teams are trying to find themselves, and Southern may have found more of themselves lately than Smith has. I've got to tell you, looking at the games this week, and I, I, get, I get what you're probably thinking. You're going to look at the records, and you're going to say, well, do I really want to tune in? But I'm here to tell you, just looking at the matchups in terms of just looking on paper, what's going to be a close game, evenly matched teams, this is the one that I had circled the most. Uh, you know, we talked about Northwest and Northern. We, we both like that matchup, but I think apart from that one, if you're just looking for a close game where we really don't know who's going to win or who's going to show up, right. I think that's the one right there. And they got young players on both teams, so you never know who's going to show up in that case, right? And I, wow. I think mentally, you talk about Southern, they needed a game-winning touchdown to win last week. Smith, on the other hand, got blown out at home. I think who's going to show up? whose emotions are in the right place, I think that could be just as important, honestly. And that kid, uh, or the man who came down from CBS to take over and help the basketball expert, the, the analyst Seth Davis took over quarterback for Southern since he left the CBS basketball announcing <laughs> crew and came down. So a pretty good job. I like that guy. Um, we got some Shrine Bowl reps this week announced. Good to see the Dudley Panthers had a couple of guys representing for North Carolina, for the North Carolina team. Nasir Newkirk and Jerome Blackwell got on there. How about that? There you go. Yeah, the Shrine Bowl of Carolinas. Uh, it's the oldest high school all-star game in the nation. And uh, we have two uh, Greensboro representatives there, both from the same team. Uh, so good to see those guys getting recognition. Uh, both have had great careers at Dudley. I know that uh, – Blackwell started his time at Page, but, uh, you know, I, I think it'll be uh, interesting to see those kids on the spotlight on a Saturday afternoon, um, you know, see what happens there. Have you heard anything from those two guys since they were named to the team, anything? I have, Any I have not. Have either so far, just kind of see what the reaction might be like, and hopefully they will play. Sometimes guys get selected for those games and opt out, but I hope they will play in that game. <laughs> Um, that's one reason why they moved the East-West in December, because many guys were opting out already. The only thing I'll say is, it is uh, it could be the same day that Dudley plays for a state championship yeah. because of the uh, recent NCHSAA decision to uh, push back the playoffs because of the hurricane uh, yeah. situation. So that that state championship, if Dudley does make it that far, there could be a conflict there. Oh, yeah. We'll see how that develops. I had this dream one time. I always dream do these make believe dreams. I'm playing high school football, I got this dream, and all of a sudden we have a championship game on Friday. We, we win the championship Friday. Last minute they call me as a replacement to come play in the Shrine Bowl game. I said, yeah, I'll play. <laughs> Zip down in the car, go on Saturday, play them both back-to-back nights. So you can't do that these days. Too much involved, too much injury possibility. And while you're on that topic, yes. the East-West game, the West coach is Stephen Davis as well. Oh, wow, that's interesting And too. so Stephen Davis uh, that All-Star game would be on that Sunday, and I was told, at least the Coaches Association said that if you are involved in said game and there's a conflict there, that they would actually have you coach in the 2026 game the next year. because the 2025 game has already been chosen. Right. So. Um, We'll see what happens there's there. A lot of, the old saying goes, I don't know much about this word. I've heard this word a lot over the years. The old word addendum. There's a lot of addendum possibilities there, right? A lot of possibilities. Yeah, and then also throw in the fact that the HACO Invitational oh, right was on also on the same week. And Dudley has a bunch of football players on that basketball team. I did talk to good old Rock Bernie. Uh, I know you know Rock Bernie. But, yeah. Uh, so we'll see what happens there with the with the Haco. It's interesting too with the Dudley <laughs> basketball players. How many guys decide to play basketball this year? How many decide to go skip basketball because of football and go ahead and go on to college maybe early early entry thing too? That's going to be interesting when it comes that time. And a lot of decisions to be made next few weeks. It's going to be a busy time. The elections coming up. All these other decisions. <laughs> Decision 2024. More Big. than a voting ballot. Oh man, more than the booth. <laughs> uh, Eastern of Wildcats surging right now. They started 0 and 3. Now 3 and 3. How far can they make this thing go. Round one last year in the playoffs, Central Davison. 
They want to stop and top what they did last year. What about that? these Wildcats on the move right now? I think Eastern was a team that I think before the season started, I think, um, you know, you really thought that they would be a contender probably to finish second place in the conference. Mm -hmm. I think realistically Dudley has been the top dog, but I think, um, you know, just in terms of what we thought, probably thought second. Um, I think the first couple of weeks they had some young players still trying to find their way. Last few weeks I think we've seen more of what we probably thought they would be. Um, and I know a couple of years ago they had a similar situation where they lost the first couple of games and rolled, you know, deep. And so I, it would not shock me if this team did the same thing. Um, Dudley's going to be tough. They play each other the last week of the regular season. Uh, could that be another, you know, de facto championship game right. for the Mid-State 3A? Um, I, th I think it's very likely. I, I do. I think it's very likely. I think when Caleb Creech had that 300-yard game a couple weeks back, I was like, that's the signal. We back. We back. <laughs> you know, he's got their back now. They got, got him going again. They want, they want him to run. And they got the quarterback, uh, Majette, doing well now, settling into that role. And Stephen Murray is getting some help at the receiver from other receivers on the team now. They're, they're starting to really pick it up. And the defense has been good all the way through, I think. And the defense had some of the guys back from last year's team, Samari Smith and Junior Solomon and others on that squad. Don't forget big Xavier Wilson, too, big kid there. He's a very big one. Oh, yeah, state champion wrestler. Uh, yeah, 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 big part of that unit. Yeah, very tough big man, no doubt about it. So Eastern Guilford's back on the surge, back on the move, and Northern Guilford's hanging tough at 6-0, trying to maintain against Northwest tomorrow night. Have you found any food at the press boxes this season? Any food at press boxes so far this year? You want to go to different ball games? Anybody providing any food so far? Any food providing? Yeah. Let me think about this. You know, well, I tell you what, Gr Grimsley did when I oh, did when they? I covered. Uh, right. Uh, Grimsley brought some pizza up there. Right. I know back in the day, Ethan Albright would always have drinks for uh, me too. When Ethan was there, those drinks would be everywhere. All kinds so of drinks. First, so that so that's the first one I recall, and I'm trying to think if there's been another one. Anybody in Forsyth? Because East Forsyth, I heard, used to have really good food. I've not gone to any of their games, but uh, they used to have that. Back in, you went there for the scrimmage. That was it. They went out for a scrimmage. They, they used to. They used to have a. Actually, East Forsyth used to have a of a spread, spread yeah, a, spread. a big spread. I, now, I haven't covered a game over there this year, but right. I know they they used to have a spread there. And uh, I mean, that whole press box, it's one of the best press boxes in this triad for those that haven't been in there. Mm -hmm. But they've got a whole row of, uh, with room for several media members. They've got like a whole uh, big wall in the back. The back wall goes way back there, doesn't it? Big, high, expansive back wall. Yeah, they've got, they've got some walking room there. And then they usually have pizza and I don't know, sometimes chicken wings, a whole bunch of stuff. The best food day. I had lately, a few years ago, Eastern Guilford played against New Hanover, Wilmington, Hanover, and in Wilmington had drywall in Wilmington. <laughs> then we got down, they actually had Jason Deli's sandwiches there that night. That was great. Okay. But I thought I'd get to this last Friday, talk about this year's Press Box food. Had, had, I hadn't seen any this year, but uh, last Friday, they had hot dogs, chips, Rice Krispies treats, bottled water at Northwest Guilford. Hmm, okay. I just had everybody a, a bag there, a bag lunch, a bag meal are, right are, there for you. Northwest, are, are and you, you may be do able, that again this week? I'm or? saying you may be looking for that tomorrow. Something to be <laughs> thinking about for tomorrow. Don't, get me, don't get me too excited, Andrew. That, it, it's interesting to see, man, because those hot dogs, they had some stuff in the bag for the hot dogs. They had the hot dogs. They had the chips. They had the uh, bottled water. They had the Rice Krispie treats. All those things last week. Man, Northwest see. Guilford. Got a lot. Now, also, brings me back to the old days in Eastern Guilford. Eastern Guilford old days used to have this like country kitchen food there, man. They had a press box back in the Eastern sure. Guilford. Go country food. And it'd be like the food everywhere there at Eastern Guilford back in the day. And it also brought me back to memory too. I, was, I used to go to the games on those Friday nights back in the day and I'd cover those games and try to get reaction for the fans. <laughs> you know, people on the field, in the stands, whatever. And then around the field. Not the fans on the field, but different people. This old gentleman at Eastern Guilford one night, we got in the car. I said, what are you guys eating? He goes, oh, collards. I said, collards? What are you collard greens? I said, what are you talking about? What, collards? What are collards? He started explaining collard greens and uh, <laughs> Spanish and green, all that stuff. I said, you know, you got these collards. What do you, how do you, what do you do these things? So he said, you cook them on Saturday morning. Said, Tomorrow morning, I'm going to be cooking me a, I said, what are you going to be doing this weekend? I'm cooking me a big old pot of collard greens. Collard, how do you, what do you do that? You cook them, you put, put in a big pot and start cooking this early Saturday morning, cook them all day. I said, well, after you cook them, what are you doing? He goes, I eat them. I said, I'll never forget that guy's line as long as I live. He goes, when you get these things cooked and ready, what are you doing? I, go, I eat them, I eat them, I eat them. I said, man, sounds good. A mess of collards. Yeah, that makes me think of, I, I used to cover school 
and they're probably not listening, but I'm going to give a shout out to Greenwood, Arkansas. Oh, yeah. A traditional power in the state of Arkansas, public school anyway. And they always had a nice barbecue buffet in their press box. Yeah. If you just happen to be listening, Greenwood, Arkansas, Greenwood, Arkansas. known for their high up-tempo spread offense, Tyler Wilson, who played for the Razorbacks, if you're, if you're listening, I'm going to say there's a 99.9% .9 chance you're not, but if you are, Greenwood, Arkansas, shout out to them. They had to spread offense and had the barbecue spread in the press yeah. box, huh? Ain't that the truth. Boy, when you find teams like that that have situations like that, sometimes you think, well, you got to decide which game I'm going to cover this week. Well, Greenwood, well, you, know, well, you got Greenwood, you got uh, Southwood, huh? I'm going to Greenwood. <laughs> I go where the food is, man. Go where the nice food is, good setup. Because, uh, man, I don't know what you're saying. That's, that's got to be good stuff. State Association used to go to Riley or Chapel Hill for those championship games. They usually have some food somewhere around. Sometimes you got to dig around to find it, but usually there's something fairly good. If you've got time to eat it, that's the whole thing about these games over the years, if you've got time to consume it, because usually it's so busy, you got to get down there and then get set up and park in the parking garage and haul our stuff around, get up to the, to the upper tower there at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill and find your spot and then make sure you get set up right and get going and all that stuff. But again, Northwest Guild tomorrow night, be watching for that. Uh, Mr. Hilton's there. You remember Mr. Hilton, I'm sure. Cody Hilton's dad, Dan Hilton. He's a PA man at uh, Northwest. Dan Hilton, his daughter was a cheerleader. I think she's now a dentist or doing dental work in the, probably in the Army. Because I said the Navy last week. He said it was the Army. But she's doing real well for herself. But Cody is a middle school basketball coach at Northwest Guild. A very good job. A former basketball player for Northwest. Cody Hilton's dad, Dan Hilton, does a PA. They should be there tomorrow night for Northwest and Northern Guilford. Looking forward to that game. And, yeah, good old rivalry. Yeah. And it, it also, with the new conference realignment, yeah. this is, uh, um, it looks pretty safe to say this will be the last time this will be a conference game. Um, so they're going to they're gonna try to preserve that thing as a non-conference contest. But in terms of conference play, um, you know, it's highly doubtful that these two teams will be in the same conference. So... So this will be the last run. It's good to too. I got to ask Coach Westbrook about that when I see him tomorrow night or sometime soon. Uh, ask him about the fact, you know, this is the big thing now. You got this Grimsley matchup looming, yeah. other games looming, but the back of your mind, you got to be thinking somewhere in the back of your mind, somewhere there, about the fact, what's it going to be like next year? You know, you're still going to have all these kids in this junior squad at Northern now. Jackson Kemp and Mari Akers and uh, others, along with, I think, Council and also probably Reggie King, those guys. Anyway, a ton of those guys, Chance Cruz, others coming back next year. I mean, this year is a good year for the next year. It could be their peak, but you can't rule out. You can't. You got to finish up this year, but you can't help but look ahead a little bit and think positively <laughs> about next year for them. Yeah, I mean, they've got a, like you said, a bunch of young talent. Uh, last year they were pretty young. I think you saw glimpses of it, but they went four and six last year, and they lost a bunch of games, close margins. And I think just looking at that, you're like, well, if you just get a little bit better, that record is going to flip around. And so far, they're undefeated with only a few games left in the regular season. Yeah, can't help but like it. Big matchup, all right, Northwest and Northern at Northwest. I will see you there. All right, Mr. Durham, thank you as always for having me. Appreciate you today. We'll have a, hopefully have a good mess of food there tomorrow night <laughs> at the Northwest Cooper Press Box. Take a break on Football Focus.